Welcome back. I hope you are safe and healthy. Today is February 24th of 2022. And first and foremost, my thoughts and prayers go out to the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia that want no part of this war, no part of this conflict. This is uh, just a terrible, terrible situation. So my thoughts and my prayers are with you. I hope you are safe. And I hope that we get through this, or you get through this, the world gets through this um, quickly and <clears throat> with as little um, sacrifice as possible. Um, so with that, I'm going to just jump into uh, what to be on the lookout for today. Um, obviously, markets are all over the map today, um, down quite a bit. They were down last night in uh, overnight trading, and they bounced back a little bit, and then they were down on, on the news of the invasion and down this morning uh, on the news of the scale of the invasion. Uh, so it's obviously a very ser serious situation, and markets and investors are taking it seriously. But the question is, what do we look for moving forward? I'm going to be having an interview with Gareth Soloway this afternoon, and the video will be posted probably 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, where we're going to have some in-depth discussions uh, in terms of what to look for, uh, how to position yourself, things like that. But in the interim, I just wanted to put this video out and just kind of um, let you know that from an investment standpoint, from a market standpoint, we've seen uh, wars and conflicts before and how they affect markets and what the reactions look like. Markets obviously will be down this morning, depending on the scale of things and um, how the world is viewing the situation. Markets could very well snap back this afternoon to a certain degree. And then again, we're going to watch that uh, momentum into the close, just like yesterday, gives you a really good indication of what's up next. Jobless claims uh, are slightly less than expected. GDP revised up to 7%. So the economy in the United States continues to do well. So uh, inflation is our biggest issue. And with this situation and this conflict, energy price inflation is going to hit uh, pretty much everywhere, especially in the United States. So all eyes will be on the Fed to see how they react. And uh, they still have <clears throat> a couple of weeks before they get together. So we won't know uh, until we start hearing some talk out of the Fed, what they're thinking and how this conflict is going to affect their plans moving forward. Let's take a look at the charts real quick. And you can see, like we've been talking about in the past, um, let's go ahead and put this on the daily here. That was Bitcoin on the hourly. Here's Bitcoin on the daily. We've been looking at this major market macro structure trend line for this, um, <clears throat> for this area that... Uh, um, that Bitcoin's been trading in this range right here. This is our uh, do not cross line price, almost wicked down to it, almost touched it and bounced. So, so far, this is that $35,000 level that we've been talking about, 35, 36,000 for a macro bottom. Well, not macro bottom, but for a range low, given the price action that we've been tracking, looking for that retracement, and then uh, to see if price will break below this major market structure trend line here that's been put in. And right now, this may be all the retrace we're getting for the time being until we see how this uh, uh, geopolitical event, this conflict um, unfolds and what the effects on the economy are in the rest of the world. So uh, Bitcoin has held up reasonably well. Obviously, it bounced yesterday. Uh, this is on the daily here. So we had a little bounce yesterday and then it dropped back down, just like all risk assets are dropping. Altcoins are down, um, you know, obviously exponentially more than Bitcoin. Where are your safe havens? It's like we've been talking about. Bitcoin and crypto are risk assets, just is what it is, tied to the stock market. Stocks go down, Bitcoin and crypto go down. Stocks go up, Bitcoin and crypto go up exponentially more in both directions. Sometimes Bitcoin will decouple a little bit here or there or lead the markets or trail them here and there. But for the most part, they're tied joined at the hip, your safe haven assets, obviously the dollar. Uh, oil is up just because of the situation um, and the pressure that's gonna be put on oil prices with the sanctions. Um, silver, precious metals, copper is probably up, I haven't looked at it. And then of course, gold is your ultimate safe haven asset. So that debate is over. Um, when all chips are down and um, economic uncertainty, um, you know, the flight to safety is gold and the dollar. So that just is what it is right now. Bitcoin is trying to carve its place in that conversation, but it has yet to do so. And uh, we've talked about what it's gonna take for that to happen. 
Um, so anyways, we'll keep this short. I'm going to have more of an in-depth discussion later today on uh, Bitcoin, crypto, and some stocks and what you can look for with the stock market, maybe some specific stocks. Obviously, the tech stocks have taken the biggest hit, and uh, we'll talk about those, what recovery could potentially look like. But the one thing I wanted to say is I've been through a number of these events, and um, here's a little chart of what happens in times of war and times of conflict in the past. And you have everything from um, the North Korea missile crisis to bombs in Syria to U.S. Trade Center um, attacks to Pearl Harbor. And you can see that total market drawdowns during those events, the worst was Pearl Harbor at 20 percent. Um, then you had the Iraqi invasion in Kuwait. That was 17 percent, 16.9 of course, that was the U.S. going in. Um, the U.S. terror, terror attacks were 12 percent. And, um, you know, the bottom uh, days to recover, you can see over here on average. So on average, markets were down 5 percent. And it was as bad as, like I said, 19 percent. Um, the average bottom was 22 days. Average time of recovery was 47 days. So, you know, it's like I say, bad times never last. Good times never last. Markets were overcooked and overbaked and needed to deleverage and needed to reprice. And in events like this, you get these quick snapbacks because a lot of it's algorithmic. If this, then that. If Russia invades, uh, if Russia does this with the invasion, if Russia, you know, different levels of it, markets are programmed, algorithms are programmed with response. And then retail investors see that and follow. And, um, you know, the sell off continues. But again, it doesn't last very long. Uh, most of these events were very short-lived. Markets uh, tend to snap back and recover very quickly. And then once that happens, the initial knee-jerk reactions up and down, then you get into those more longer-term uh, discussions and more macroeconomic events, um, given the geopolitical situation. And in our discussions and looks that we've been tracking with Bitcoin on that bottom, that $35,000, $36,000 bottom, um, that we were looking at back in January and looking for the retrace to begin around February 14th. We said three things would invalidate this whole thing for the market. And the three things were uh, geopolitical climate um, and conflict. Uh, the second thing was a meltdown in the stock market. And the third thing would be a resurgence of the pandemic or a new variant or something like that. So there are two out of those three. Hopefully the third will not rear its head and uh, enter into the equation. But we do have two of those situations happening at the same time. So all bets are off for uh, stock markets, cryptos right now in terms of timelines and timeframes. It's all going to depend on um, how severe this situation gets and how much of the world ends up getting involved and what are the economic events around the world because we are a global economy. So these are the things I'm looking at. I hope you're safe and healthy. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people, with the Russian people as well. I know they're uh, the bulk and majority of the Russians do not want this either. Um, and neither do the Ukrainian people. So I hope you're safe. And I hope that uh, we can get through this quickly and swiftly and uh, with the least amount of um, you know, uh, severe situations and consequences um, for people. So uh, I will see you on the next video and uh, be safe, be healthy.